Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Nate here, and today we are going over the second of the two Kepler problems from Hackasat 2021. We're going to be going over a problem uh, called Cotton IGO. It's the follow up to Fiddle and John Carson, which there's another video on this channel about if you want to go back and watch that. But I don't think you'll need to have those concepts in order to do the stuff we're going to do today. It'll just be kind of interesting information that's sort of supplementative uh, to what we're talking about. In this problem, we are provided a transfer orbit and we are asked to circularize it at a specific altitude above the Earth's surface. And if you don't know what any of those terms mean, we're gonna cover all of that, so don't worry about that. Uh, but that's generally what we're gonna be doing today. So we're gonna do taking a transfer orbit, calculating a circular orbit at a certain time and position, and using Python to do that. So uh, you'll be able to program this for CTF competitions, or if you wanted to do something uh, more interesting with you know actual science, you'd be able to use the same types of concepts to do that kind of stuff as well. Regardless, I am building a channel here targeted at teaching poorly taught concepts, things that I feel like I learned too late in my career, or abstract technologies that I would have been interested in learning earlier if I had only been exposed to them. So if you find this type of information useful, please like the video so we can get it out to more people, subscribe to the channel for more of it, and with that said, let's get right into the video. All right, so before we get into the actual technicals of things, like how to solve it, or even some of the space concepts, I just want to open up a netcat shell to the challenge which i'm running on a ubuntu machine elsewhere on my desktop right now uh, that we can connect to and sort of see the problem from and so to do that we're just going to do netcats the address so 192.168.168.1.38 uh, and then the port number it's running on which is 54321 and when we do this we'll get the problem and so we connect to it we get kepler 2 geo uh, t delta v challenge uh, spelled incorrectly, of course, uh, just as the last one was. I'll make this a little bit smaller so we can see it. And uh, I'm not going to back that off, but we'll get the idea. So it says your spacecraft from the first Kepler challenge is in a geotransfer orbit. And we need to determine the maneuver, time and delta V, so at a time in the orbit. And uh, uh, we need to determine the amount of change in our velocity that is required to put the spacecraft in a, ge in a geostationary orbit at an altitude, um, or this is A in Kepler, so it would be semi-major axis of 42, uh, 164 kilometers, plus or minus 10 kilometers, a eccentricity, so a circular orbit of uh, 0 0.001, and an inclination of less than one degree. And so it tells us we can assume a two-body orbit dynamic, uh, orbital dynamic environment uh, and an instantaneous change in delta V, which is important because it means that we don't have to calculate our change over time where we would have to do that uh, if we were told we had a standard rocket motor for example and so to clarify some of the stuff and oh and we're also given um, our current position right so that's important as well uh, this tells us what the orbit we're on is and so we're going to go in and show the specific concepts but from this picture that challenge gives us we kind of get an idea of what's going on actually uh, so we've got this starting orbit we've got a transfer orbit that we're on so we're in this sort of intermediary orbit here and then the final orbit that it wants that's circular and a, uh, a delta vector here, a delta symbol here. And this is actually where in the orbit, in this orbit, we're going to want to burn to make this orbit circular, to circularize it. And so now we're going to go into Universe Sandbox, which if you haven't watched the first video, is just a space simulator we can use to show orbits. And we're going to talk about the different concepts before we go and solve it. Right, so we are now in Universe Sandbox, which if you didn't watch the first video, is a space simulator that allows us to kind of visualize orbits, planetary, gravitational fields, and that kind of stuff. And it's really useful for explaining these types of space problems. So if we look at what we've got, we have this transfer orbit right here. We've got a larger circular orbit and a smaller circular orbit. And what I want to make the point about here is that you would use a transfer orbit, the orbit that we're currently on, to go from one orbit at one height to another orbit at another position. Or like, you would use it to go from one planetary body to another. So a transfer orbit just means an orbit that's used to get from one place to another. And so the, the challenge is implying, if you remember back to the picture, that we had a smaller orbit, we made a burn, and we pushed out the apoapse to, uh, to reach this transfer orbit. And then we need to find the point in this orbit uh, either here or here, and I'll show this in a second, that we can use to burn and create this larger circular orbit here. And so we're basically trying to go from this first orbit to the second one, and we are on a transfer orbit. That is the orbit that they provided us.
So to clarify, I'm gonna click on final orbit here, or I'm gonna click on transform orbit actually. Where is that at? Uh, maybe it's in here. Oh, it's here. All right, transform orbit, and then we are going to go to true anomaly so we can adjust the position in the orbit. And so basically we were at the starting orbit, we got to this point in the starting orbit, we were flying around here, we got to here, and then we burned and moved the this edge of the orbit out to here. And then once we were good, once we uh, raised it above where we wanted to be, we now have a point in this orbit that lines up with where we, where we want to be in the final orbit. So we basically want to get the transfer orbit to be a position in the final orbit. And there are two options. There's right here where we could burn or on the other side when we're descending, um, when we're, we're moving retrograde, that we could, we could burn here as well. And so we continue to move around, continue to move around, continue to move around once we're in the transfer orbit. And we finally get to here, somewhere around there. You kind of get what I'm trying to say, like right at this point where it crosses over. And we're able to burn to create the circular orbit. And so this is what we're trying to figure out. We're trying to figure out what point in time gives us this position or this position. And within 10 kilometers of our altitude that it provided us, or our semi-major axis is how it did it, but it's basically an altitude. And at that point, what, what delta V change do we need to make to get to here, to get to push this side of the orbit out to there. So basically we go to here, we push this side of the orbit out to here, we fly around, we get to here, and then we push this side of the orbit out to there. And so that's pretty much all there is to solving this challenge. But now let's get into the actual Python and go and solve it. All right, so now that we have covered the orbital mechanics that we need to actually accomplish what we want to accomplish, let's get into the actual Python, the actual code, and talk about how to solve this problem. So I'm gonna open up the solution that I wrote and we're gonna just sort of talk through what we're trying to do. And so we've imported NumPy, uh, AstroPy, and PolyAstro, and we're gonna use these libraries to do what we're trying to do. And so the first thing we need to do, and we're gonna use Pwn Tools, excuse me, we're gonna use Pwn Tools to do the actual harnessing for the challenge and make sure that we're reading in all the data we need to read in, formatting it appropriately, all that good stuff. And we're also gonna use it to send the information back to the server once we're done solving it so we can get the flag. So the first thing we do is we instantiate a Pwn Tools remote object to the server. Right now it's running on 1.38 for me, 54321. And we have a target ICRF radius, meaning a radius from the center of the earth, uh, because the center position in ICRF, ICRF is just a coordinate plane, and 000, XYZ000 in ICRF is the center of the earth. So we're basically going to measure the distance from 000 to wherever we are in ICRF position um, which is just, again, that coordinate position. Uh, and we're going to see if that value is, is this, if it's 42,164 kilometers. And we're basically going to just propagate forward in the orbit until we get to that point. So here we're defining a global static variable as that, that integer that we're going to use to measure that. And so the first thing we do is we receive the information from the server, we get our position uh, as kilometers in the coordinate plane, and then this list instantiation is simply taking that information and actually receiving the string and converting it to the right uh, type. So a, a list of integer values, basically, or floats, excuse me. Uh, and that's going to be our position. We're going to do the same thing with velocity, uh, and we'll have our, our starting velocity at our current position in the orbit, not at the position where we want to do our transfer. Uh, we're also going to get our time. We're going to need that to, to format things correctly. And so using all this data, we're going to instantiate a transfer orbit um, using polyastro and the, the orbit object. And we're going to say we want to define an orbit from vectors, meaning from position and velocity, rather than from Keplerian parameters, which we saw in the first video. And so this is going to be position in, in kilometers, velocity in kilometers uh, over time, right, over seconds. And then we're going to find the last thing as the time, which we got from the last piece here uh, as our epoch. And we're just going to print that out to the screen. And so the important thing here is we've got our orbit uh, as our position, a uh, our orbit as our velocity and then the time and the last thing we're doing is we're printing out the radius from the center of icrf 000 to our current position and the way we do this is using a norm a linear this is a linear algebra right so we're doing a norm on the vector so we've got uh, our starting position 000 and our finishing position whatever that uh, series of integers is xyz and we're calculating a norm to get the length of that vector from the center of icrf to our current position and that is basically the radius uh, from the center of Earth to our, our current position. And so we're going to use that to check if we are equal to 42,164. 
Keep in mind that your semi-major axis, this A value that we're given, may not be, uh, and if this confuses you, don't worry about it, but this may not be um, the actual radius if you're not a circular orbit, but we want to calculate a circular orbit and it would be off our current position. So when we rotate, we are, we are basically setting the semi-major axis because any point in that orbit is going to be a semi-major axis uh, of the same thing, right? So like, or, or rather, as we go around, our radius maintains the same, the same value, so the semi-major axis will not change. And again, if that's confusing, don't worry about that one piece. Um, it's not super important to exactly what we're doing here. And then, so the next component here is we're going to propagate forward in the orbit. So from our current position, remember I, in the last section, we went around the orbit until we got to that point. We have those two periods where we can burn it. The first one, uh, we want to basically find what that value is. And so we're going to propagate forward in the orbit by using uh, this, this uh, value here, time delta equals one. So transfer orbit, this is our, our orbit we have, dot propagate is the method. And we are going to propagate by time delta of one second. So we're going to just continue moving forward one second at a time and checking uh, how far we are off the center of ICRF. And so while our transfer orbit is not, uh, while we're not at the right radius, we're just going to continue to propagate this orbit forward until we are. And so we're going to find one opportunity. If for some reason that wouldn't work, we could continue to propagate forward until we found another opportunity. Because like I said, there are those two different places in the orbit um, that we were able to do that. But once we finally uh, find it, this while loop will, of course, exit because our transfer orbit is, is more than or equal to this, uh, this target value that we set. And it's just going to print that right out to the screen. So at this point, we've basically just calculated the time uh, that we need, to, we need to move. So we propagate forward in time until we find the position where we can burn at that first position. And then we've identified the time. So the first thing we've done is just identify the time. Now that we've got the time, we need to calculate the delta V required to circular, circularize. And there are linear algebra ways to do this, but uh, to sort of cheat and get around doing any sort of math, because that's what I'm all about here, uh, we are going to find the velocity that we currently have at that position, and then we are going to calculate the velocity of a circular orbit um, with us at that same position. And by doing that, we'll have the velocity of the start We'll have the velocity of where we want to be at the end, and all we need to do at that point is just do subtraction to figure out what the difference in velocity needs to be. And we've got velocity on an x, y, and z vector, so we know if we just set those to exactly what it's going to be for the final orbit, we'll have realized the final orbit. And the easiest way to do this is to just define a final orbit and say orbit from classical, and we want to define it uh, as a quantity target radius of uh, eccentricity zero, meaning how circular is it? Zero would be perfectly circular, uh, circular. And then in radians, we're going to define the inclination, so the tilt off of the um, off of the sort of equator. And again, you can go back to the first video to see this stuff. But once we've got this perfectly cir circular orbit defined at our target radius in kilometers, we basically have the final orbit, and we have it at our our time. So we're saying to find this orbit with our transfer orbit epoch. And remember, we propagated that forward. So the time's going to be the same in the two. And so now we've got two orbits. We've got a final orbit and a transfer orbit. We are at the same point in time, and we have two different velocities. And all we have to do to solve this problem is take the final orbit velocity, subtract the transfer orbit velocity, and get our solution in delta V. And this is just a list x, y, z of integers, x, y, and z. And so we're going to print that right out to the screen and say this is our final solution. Uh, we are going to receive, the last thing we're going to do is receive uh, the time tag from the server. And once we get that, we are going to send our solution time. That's the first thing it wants. What time are we burning? Uh, once it knows what time we're going to burn at, we're just going to send the, the three values. So X, Y, and Z. I did this with a for loop here. You could have sent them manually, individually. It uh, doesn't matter. And once we've sent our solution, we just listen until we get a flag prompt and print out everything we see after that. And so now that we've got all that uh, put in place, last thing we're going to talk about, last thing we're going to show is actually solving the challenge so you can see this in operation in real time. All right, so now we're on a terminal, we're on a command prompt in a Unix machine, the machine that I just showed you the solution on. And you'll see we've got that Python file in this directory. And all we're going to do to actually solve this is run that file. and we'll talk about each component as it goes. So we run it, it's 
going to open the connection, receive it. It gets the initial position velocity and time, like I said, and calculates an initial radius of 12,436 kilometers. And now it's going to start propagating forward. And basically, I'm just overriding the line over and over again. That's why it's not propagating down. Uh, very easy way. You just This is done with um, basically ASCII codes. You can look that up. Uh, or you can go to the GitHub and see how this is done. But basically, we're going to continue to propagate forward, and you see the radius increases as we move forward uh, until we get 42,000, whatever it was, 40,100 something. And when it finds that position, it's going to just overwrite this line again, and it found it. So this position is a valid burn opportunity, and it occurs at this time in the orbit. And so now we know that this is the burn time we're going to use, and the velocity at that point in time is for, for our transfer orbit is this for the final orbit what we want is this and all we do is subtract the values we get a negative 0 0.9 negative 1.0 whatever it is negative 0 0.0026 remember i said the inclination doesn't change much so that makes a lot of sense we send that to the server and we get our flag which is subscribe for more of this stuff and so that's all there is really really all there really is to it uh, if there's anything that's kind of fuzzy, uh, this is a lot of different conceptual stuff, a lot of different code um, that gets used here. If there's any questions, leave those down in the comments below. I will get back to as many people as I can. Hopefully that's everybody. Uh, if you learned anything, please like the video, subscribe to the channel for more of it, and I will see you guys in just a few days.